Good afternoon and welcome to Crafters TV. Perhaps you've been with us the whole day already so far. We've got lots more lined up um, throughout the rest of today and I'm really, really excited to be bringing you this afternoon's craft along. So I'm Lily and I'm going to be taking you through this next hour and we're actually going to be creating this lovely uh, keepsake box which is going to be perfect for all of your Christmas and just your winter creations as well. And we're going to be focusing on this craft along on our fabulous um, Gemini Fancy Sentiment Stamp and Dies which is what we've used um, to create the lovely sentiments on this box here but of course bringing in lots of other elements from our crafty sash as well bringing in decoupage you know i love my florals so i had to bring in some of our winter floral decoupage into this um, project we're also going to be using some of our christmas nesting frames and some of our sarah signature frosty and bright collection as well but before we do get started we're going to run through exactly what you're going to need um, to create this project so we're going to take you through our shopping list to be able to make this box so this is exactly what you're going to need uh, to be able to pop this project together. So you will need your Let It Snow stamp and die set, which is from your Gemini Christmas Fancy Sentiments, your Sparkling Snowflake die set, Winter Roses die set, and the matching decoupage topper pad. From the Sarah Signature Frosty and Bright collection, you need your 12 by 12 inch paper pad, A4 card, and the Polar Blue Water Reactive Ink Pad. You're also gonna need your multi-purpose card. That can be either the A4 or the A3 size. You'll need your Spectra Noir Quick Dry Ink Pad in Parakeet, some Organza Ribbon, then you will also need your Collal All Purpose Glue, Foam Pads, Red Liner Tape, Gemini Die Cutting Machine, a large guillotine, a scoreboard, a stamping platform and stamping mat, pair of scissors, pokey tool and some pearls and that's everything you're going to need um, to pop this project together. So we're going to start at the very beginning uh, I'm going to start by actually popping this um, sort of outer wrap to the box together. So it nearly fell off a top shelf and I was thinking oh gosh could be a bit dicey. I'm here all on my own though this afternoon so I'd love to have all your comments. Uh, I'd love to hear what you think of this craft along if you're perhaps crafting along with us. Love to see your mates afterwards but like I say just an hour today um, Ben's got to go down for a lie down. That's why I'm on my own. He's been on Wake Up Call with Sarah, Fast and Furious Pace show. He's back for a three hour cartload with Sarah this evening. So Ben was like, I need a rest. So I'm here all on my own. So please do keep me company. Get those comments coming in. We'd love to hear from you this afternoon. But before I start waffling too much, because you know what I'm like, I can talk the hind legs off a donkey, as my mum would say. I'm going to start off with the project. And what we're taking to start with is we're taking a piece of our multi-purpose cardstock. And like I did say earlier, this can be either your A4 or your A3 size. So if you do only have your A4, quite frankly, what are you doing? Get yourself some A3 card. It's fabulous, this multi-purpose in A3, but it will also work with your A4. And what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to cut it down to 12 inches in length by six and a quarter. So 12 by six and a quarter. And if you're not keeping up with any of these measurements, just because it is a little bit quicker with it being just an hour, don't worry, I'll post all the measurements on my Lily Fletcher Crafters Companion Facebook page uh, after our craft along today. So six and a quarter by 12. And on the long edge, I'm just taking my scoreboard and I'm gonna score at five and a quarter. So I'm going along and I'm gonna find five inches and a quarter. So using our scoreboard, it can be any scoreboard, um, as long as it's A4 or larger, it will be perfect size to work with this. So one at four um, and a, ooh, five and a quarter, sorry. I'm losing my measurement, it's five and a quarter. And then we're gonna go in at six and three quarters. So five and a quarter and six and three quarters and just scoring onto there like so. Then all we're gonna do is just gonna move our scoreboard out of the way for just a moment. We're gonna take our bone folder and we're just gonna reinforce those score lines. So just to give us a really nice sharp crease onto um, our um, fold line onto there. And I'm having some lovely comments coming through, being fed them through my ear today by Jamie and George, got those, uh, the, um, Voices in my head today. I've uh, got some lovely, uh, lovely comments coming through. So it's lovely to have your company this afternoon. It's nice that I'm not here, just on my own. It does feel like I'm talking to an empty room. So it's nice to know that I've got you guys uh, listening along at home and hopefully crafting along too. So this is the basis of our outer wrap, but of course we're gonna have to bring in some mats and layers. And like I said earlier, we are working with some of our Sarah Signature Frosty and Bright collection. So we've taken some of the A4 cardstock and also some of the 12 by 12 inch paper pad. But what you'll notice on my original project, I've used some of the glitter card, but for this one, I'm gonna use a pearl. So just something ever so slightly different just showing the variety but it's still from that exact same A4 card pack and what we've done is we've cut our A4 card stock 
to five inches by six inches and that's going to allow us when we pop this onto this area here it's a quarter of an inch smaller um, than that outer frame it's just nice i always find to work in your quarter of an inch increments for your mats and layers i find that having quite small thin mats and layers gives you quite an elegant and quite a refined look um, to all of your crafting so a quarter of an inch smaller so this piece is five inches by six inches and by working in that quarter of an inch increments it means that this piece of our pattern paper is four and three quarters by five and three quarters and all we're going to do is we're just going to mat and layer the two together and you'll notice on this pattern paper and it's similar uh, sort of thing on a lot of our paper pads you'll have one design so the front design in that paper pad will be a lot more strong there'll be a lot more sort of layers to that imagery and to that artwork a lot more interest and then the reverse will be complementary to that front design but be slightly more subtle, slightly more subdued. So great when you want a nice print onto your background, but you don't want too many layers. You don't want it to sort of detract away from whatever you're gonna add over the top. Then the reverse of those designs is perfect to use onto there. So we've matte and layered our um, solid color pearl with our um, pattern paper that just brings out the lovely blue tones in there you can see how beautifully those colors match together after all they are from the same collection so everything works together color wise perfectly now what we're going to do is we're just going to glue this onto the top uh, of this outer wrap that we have um, just scored so on this bottom section so basically we've got three sections we've got two which are the same size and then we've got a smaller section in the middle and this is just going to go on what's going to form um, the top of our box but before we do that we're going to actually bring in some of our organza ribbon so i've just taken some um, nice blue it's a nice bluey greeny turquoisey type color uh, of our organza ribbon um, I think, I want to say this is from one of our subs boxes. I want to say it's from 48, but I could be wrong. But any, any ribbon at all, um, organza ribbon, it can be satin ribbon, it's totally up to you. You could be using twine. Um, anything that's going to be able to be tied in a bow that's going to form our fastening will be perfect. And what we're doing is we're adding some red liner tape, but making sure we're more than a quarter of an inch away from that edge, just so that we're not going to have any of the adhesive uh, being exposed when we add that layer over the top. And all we're going to do is just going to line that up with the middle. Of course, you could be actually me measuring the middle and marking it and adding a pencil line, but I'm just going to do it by eye. That looks va vaguely central, central enough uh, for a Thursday afternoon anyway. And no one will know any different if it's a few mils out. We're just going to stick that onto there. And then we're going to bring in our matting layer that we've just uh, prepared. And we're going to use this to actually cover where that um, ribbon has joined onto our box lid. So it's just going to give you a really nice neat finish onto there like so. I'm just going to glue that onto the top, nice and easy to do. And that's going to form the lid um, for our outer wrap for our box. Then we're going to concentrate onto this middle section here. And I've taken another piece, uh, five inches by six inches again, of that luxury cardstock from the Frosty and Bright collection. And that's just going to go into the base. Now, the reason why we've not uh, got another mat of our pattern paper onto here is just because when we add our inner box, because it's almost like two boxes joined together, we've got an inner box uh, and this outer wrap, which is what we're creating at the moment. When we actually um, pop our inner box into there, it's going to be about a quarter of an inch smaller than this piece. So there'd be no point adding in another mat into the centre because it would just end up being covered. So that's why we're just going to have the one mat of our coloured cardstock. And again, we're going to do the same technique as what we did um, on the lid. We're going to add our um, ribbon. So exactly the same ribbon um, that we've added to the top. We're going to do the same sort of thing to the bottom. So using our red liner tape, ideal for when you are working with any sort of fabric like your ribbon, you just know you're going to get that perfect stick onto there. Laying that down, sticking it down, and then using our matten layer to trap that underneath. So it's going to make sure it's nice and secure, but it's also going to cover that join having some lovely comments coming through this afternoon so thank you all so much for your company saying i've got a very soothing voice which is quite nice i'm usually being told i'm like a foghorn so it makes a nice change <laughs> when i'm shouting people what are you doing what are you doing that for <laughs> uh, and a lot of you are saying you love the color i must say i love the color we had our our lovely michelle's in actually today um, she's coming up tomorrow on crafters tv but she's popped in today uh, and she was looking at this craft along and we all said the same we all love this color so i'm glad you guys at home are loving the color as well beautiful teal that so that's our um, inner matten layer and then to really finish this off, we're going to add another matte and layer to this. It's almost like the spine of the box. So what we've done is we've taken some more of this um, lovely uh, coloured card from the Sarah Signature Frosty and Bright. And we've cut it down um, 
to six inches by one and a quarter. And then we've taken some more of that pattern paper that we used um, for the lid just to keep that continuity, keeping that um, same design running through the lid of this box and the side. And then we've cut this smaller piece down to one inches by five and three quarters. So again, it's that quarter of an inch. And I keep wanting to say quarter of an inch, seam allowance. Don't know who I think I am sewing. I'm, I've become Becky Swan or something. I must have spent too much time in a company. Not seam allowance, that quarter of an inch mat and layer. Uh, and it just keeps that lovely, elegant design just a little bit of the um, colour exposed just enough to really show off that lovely colour but not so much that it's going to sort of look almost um, a little bit too heavy and have too much colour that would overshadow uh, that pattern paper so that quarter of an inch gives you that lovely um, elegant look to your mats and layers and then we're just going to centralise that onto the middle of that almost like spine and then just stick that down. What you might have noticed um, from our in set of materials. I listed all-purpose glue on there and that's what I used at home for my mats and layers but for speed our tape runners are absolutely perfect and we've actually finally got these back in stock so if you do need some of these definitely check out the Crafters Companion website. You will also find all the products that I'm using on the website. Should Most of them should be listed under the shop the day category uh, as well so if you are wanting, wanting to pick up any of the, uh, the paper pads I'm using any of the A4 cardstock, you will find that on the shop today, so do just check that out. But that's that outer wrap. We're going to leave that to one side for just a moment. I'm going to focus on what is actually going to be our inner box. So this bit is going to go inside of our outer wrap that we've just created. So we're going to start again by a little bit of construction. So we've got another piece of cardstock and it's multi-purpose card once again. This is 300 GSM cardstock, and if you've not used our multi-purpose cardstock before, it's absolutely brilliant for, like the name suggests, uh, lots of uses, it's multi-purpose. So if you're creating your card bases or your boxes like we are doing here, it's 300 GSM, so it's super strong. It's gonna hold those score lines really well and uh, withstand any embellishments that you're putting onto it, even if they are quite heavy. So great for your construction. It's great for stamping onto. It's a nice smooth surface, so you're gonna get a really nice nice stamped impression. Brilliant for die cutting, brilliant for embossing, great for inking. So lots and lots of uses for this. This is like your core car stock. It's your go-to day in, day out. I have about three packs um, in reserve in my craft room. I get through a ton of this stuff, as I'm sure you can imagine with the amount of crafting I do. So make sure you always have this in stock in your craft room she'll go to it time and time again and like I said earlier you can use the A4 size wise it will work for this project but the A3 will just give you more possibilities for other creations and uh, that you're going to do possibly in the future. So for this particular piece we have cut this down to eight and three quarter inches by seven and three quarter. So we've got seven and three quarter by eight and three quarter and all we're going to do is we're going to score at one and a half inches on all four sides. So again, I'm using my uh, scoreboard. It doesn't need to be um, A4, A3 even. I'm getting confused between my A3s and my A4s. It can be A4, it doesn't need to be A3 because like I've said, we are working uh, with A4 cardstock. So your A4 scoreboards will work perfectly. But scoring down at one and a quarter not one and a quarter, one and a half inches on all four sides. And what you'll notice, and this is something I reference quite a lot, but I think it's a quite important point. And if you are new to crafting, first of all, welcome. It, it's quite addictive, I will warn you now, but it's a fabulous thing um, to do when you get crafting. Um, but if you are new, like I say, um, it's always good to repeat these, these little tips and tricks uh, techniques uh, that we use that make our crafting life that little bit easier. So when I'm scoring, it doesn't matter if I'm scoring a box like this or it's just um, a card blank that I'm scoring, I'll never do just the one score line. I'll always score multiple times over that same area. So I'll start a little bit more gently and then I'll just work up building that score line and that's going to allow you to get a nice crisp, crisp score line. Not chips, I'm thinking of my dinner already, which is not good, it's only just gone two o'clock, um, but nice crisp score line onto there and you're less likely to actually rip your cardstock. And unfortunately I'm being asked, am I having chips tonight? I'm not, but I do have some in at home, so I might have to might have to have some chips, get my chips in my craft room, I'll be crafting tonight, that's for sure. Um, always in my craft room, I do, do love my crafting, but it's always nice to have 
have a little snack, isn't it, when you are crafting? But anyway, um, I do digress. Oh, I've got some more lovely comments. Um, Bethan just said I'm doing a lovely job. Thank you very much. It's lovely to have your company. I hope you guys are following along. Perhaps you are uh, saving this project for a little bit later and are going to sit down at your leisure and actually make this craft along in your own style. Uh, I'd love to see what you do create. If you do um, recreate this project, that would be absolutely fabulous to see what you're all making. So anyway, all we're doing is we are reinforcing our score lines. So remember, we scored multiple times over that same area to build up that crisp score line. We've got no cracking in any of our score lines there. That's the beauty of your multi-purpose card. It gives you that lovely uh, crisp, crisp crease every single time. That's a nice tongue twister, isn't it? A crisp crease. <laughs> anyway, in order to form this into a box, what we always do when we're making boxes, and if you've ever watched Sarah with their scoreboards or any of our other um, demonstrators actually putting boxes together, what we do is we remove some of the bulk from these corners. So if I was just to snip down um, towards that cross line and then fold the box up, can you see that I've got a slight danger of having that bottom edge snagging on that bottom part of the box. So what we do in order to reduce that and make sure we reduce a little bit of bulk, we just cut a triangle just on a diagonal to remove that little area of cardstock onto there so that when we come to fold this up, um, that bottom edge is not gonna meet that score line. So there's no chance of having any snagging of our cardstock. It just means um, that our box is gonna fold a little bit easier. It's gonna fold a little bit more neatly. And it's gonna give us that lovely professional finish when we are putting all our boxes together. It's the same technique that I'd use for any box that I'm creating. It doesn't matter the size, the style, the cardstock that I'm using. I will always um, do this little technique of just, I always call it removing the triangles, which sounds a little bit strange, um, but literally just snipping in um, to this cross, I wanted to call it a crossroads, do you, you know what I mean, where all the score lines cross, and just snipping in along the diagonal like so. So just um, removing those from all four corners like so. So what we're going to do now is we're actually going to um, start to work with some of our um, fancy sentiments at Stampin' Dice. That's what our craft long is all about. So what we're going to do is we're going to move our, uh, this piece to one side. We're going to come back to this in a little bit. We're going to start with our decoration now, which is the exciting bit, let's be honest. I'm going to take a little look at these stamps and dies. These are absolutely fabulous. These launched, I want to say, last month. So we did a everyday version that you will find on the Shop of the Day category as well. But this is our Christmas version, and we're working with the Let It Snow version today. Of course, you can be using any of the sentiments within the range um, to create this. I've chosen Let It Snow just because it's going to work really nicely with the colour tones that we've got in this project and the design of the papers as well. Having the snow snowflakes on there, everything's going to tie together really nicely. So I've chosen the Let It Snow and what you'll see is you'll get a die that does look, does look a little bit funny, I will be honest. First time you see these you think, mm, what's that all about? But you then bring in the stamps and everything will start to make a little bit more sense. So you get each set is in two separate parts in terms of the stamps. So you've got a um, one sentiment it's a little bit more sort of solid, if you like, um, in design. And then you've got what's definitely the fancy sentiment. So you've got the swirls either side. So you've got your let it snow. Of course, you could just use snow on its own, but the larger word will match with that die. So it allows you to cut out your stamp sentiment. I'm going to show you exactly how that works. It's super, super simple to actually work with these. So what we've got is we've got a piece of cardstock in true lily style. We'll use that one. I think that's the right one, yeah. You know, I'm like with my uh, cutting down my cardstock to size. I'm very frugal, shall we call it. You could say cheap. We'll say frugal in terms of my cardstock. I mean, that's quite a big piece for me, to be fair. I've been quite generous there. But all we're going to do is we're going to cut out, um, it's almost like a bubble die, if you like. Some people do refer to these as bubble dies. Uh, it's like an outline die, our mat and layer for our word. We're just going to cut that out from our multi-purpose cardstock. And with it being a smaller die, I'm just going to run it through my Gemini when I can hear the pitch and the tone of that machine change. I know that it's been passed through and it's cut and I'm just going to reverse it back out. And that's one of the fabulous things about our Gemini machines. We've got that pause and reverse feature, so I'm not having to run it all the way through um, just for a tiny little die like this. But of course, if you do have your smaller machines, like your um, Gemini Minis, Gemini Midis, Juniors, Goes, um, whatever it may be, these will be perfect for your smaller machines as well. So we've cut one through 
uh, in our white cardstock. And what we're going to do is we're just going to cut another one from that lovely tealy coloured cardstock that we've been using in all your mats and layers um, for the project so far. So we're just going to run that through our Gemini machine again. Nothing fancy, all I'm doing is I've just used a little bit of low tack tape just to take that into position so that when it goes through that die cutting machine, I know it's not going to move. Uh, it's ever so good. And when you don't tape your die, it's down, you think, oh, I'll risk it, it'll be fine. The die always moves, doesn't it? And you end up wasting a piece of cardstock, which is... When you're a paper addict like me, it's quite sad. Having to bin a piece of cardstock is it's never good. It's always a sad moment. And I'm sure you guys at home probably feel the same. Don't like, don't like waste, especially when it's pretty papers like these. Um, so yeah, always take your dice down, definitely. Um, it's my advice on that one. So what we're going to do now is we're going to bring the stamps into play and with us doing a little bit of stamping it's completely up to you what sort of system you use for your stamps obviously we do our rocker blocks here at crafters companion we do our magnetic stamp platforms um, but what i find easiest with these um, particular stamps and dies is i find it easiest to work with my stamping mat and my little four by four inch stamp platform so what we're going to do is we're going to take some of our quick dry inks now i'm going for parakeet totally up to you of course on your color choice depending on the papers that you're using and perhaps you're using pinky colour tones and then obviously go for a um, more of a pinky ink but any at all is totally up to you but quick dry are the best ink pads within our um, range of spectrum our ink pads for all of your stamping they are they've been designed specifically for use with stamps to give you a, a nice crisp clear stamped image every single time like the name suggests Believe it or not, they do dry quickly with being quick dry, which is great if you've got layering stamps, but perfect for this as well, because it means we can just get onto the next stage nice and quickly. There's no messing about, there's no waiting for ink to dry. Let's be honest, it's like waiting, uh, watching paint dry, isn't it? Waiting for things to dry. It's ever so boring. We want to be getting on with the fun bit, which is the crafting. Um, so these quick drying pads are perfect for allowing you to be able to do that. And all we're doing is we always take our ink pad to our stamp. It allows us to get a more even uh, coat of ink over that stamp. It makes it easier to add the ink onto that stamp. And then all we're going to do is we're just going to line up um, our die cut with our stamp. So lining that up over the top. Then once we're happy with where we've positioned that, we're just going to press down firm even pressure all over that stamp just use my fingertips you're not needing to use the heel of your hand or the palm of your hand or anything like that just even pressure all over with your fingertips then quite often with these being really nice high quality photopolymer stamps they are sort of like a little bit stick not sticky but a little bit tacky if you like in nature they do have that cling which is what allows them to cling onto your stamp platforms that will allow you sometimes to have the um the cardstock will actually stick to that stamp when you've um, stamped out the image all you need to do is literally just remove it nice and easy and look at that gorgeous crisp stamped impression we get every single time with these absolutely perfect onto there and obviously the die lines up perfectly with that stamp to give you that lovely even border all around around the outside around the outside as somebody once sang <laughs> so all we're going to do is going to move that to one side for a minute and we're going to bring in a little panel that i've just um cut down to size so this is just a, a little piece of multi-purpose card and I've just cut it down to the size of our let it um, stamp and what we're going to do is same sort of technique we're going to um, pick up our stamp onto our stamping platform we're going to take our ink pad our ink pads go into our stamp and then all we're going to do is just going to turn it over and stamp it onto our piece of multi-purpose card we'll see how straight we get this quite often what I do with these is I'll cut the uh, card stock to slightly larger than I need it and then I'll stamp and then I'll cut it down to the size. But that does look quite, looks quite uh, straight and even. I'm quite proud of that, quite happy with that. I'm hearing quite a lot of you at home are actually following along, crafting along, which is absolutely fabulous to hear. Astrid is crafting along. Lovely to have your company, lovely to have you craft with us. Please do share your makes at the end. I'd love to see what, you, uh, what your take on this craft along is. Not just because I'm nosy, but just because it's nice to always share our work um, and see what everyone's crafting. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring back in that second um, die cut that we actually used uh, with that die. And what we're going to do is we're just going to stick our um, stamped image onto our um, solid blue die cut. And we're going to give it almost like a little bit of a drop shadow just to add that extra bit of detail, that extra little bit of colour under there. 
So the lower layer, we're going slightly down and slightly towards the left. So we've just got that slight drop shadow, that little bit of blue poking out. It really does just, just elevate that design a little bit more. So that's our snow. And then with the let it that we've just stamped, we've also got a matten layer. Again, it's that quarter an inch, not a seam alarm, silly, quarter an inch increment even. Uh, so it's a quarter an inch bigger with your uh, tealy colour. Keep calling it tealy colour, you know what I mean? Teal type colour, tealy colour. Probably think, what is she on about? But yeah, the teal cardstock um, is the quarter of an inch um, larger and that allows us to mat and layer that onto there. I'm gonna leave those two to one side for just a moment. And we're gonna bring in some of, I'm just deciding which bit to do next. Let's do the box size next while we've got our stamps out. So what we've done, is we've taken some more of our multi-purpose cardstock, we've cut some panels down to size, and the size we've cut these down to is we have cut from our multi-purpose card, you cut two of one inches by five and a quarter, and you need to cut two of one inches by four and a quarter. So you're gonna have two which are uh, an inch longer than the other two, but they're all one inch in width, so it's two of one inches by five and a quarters and two of one inches by four and a quarters. And then for each, we've got a corresponding mat and layer, which will be a quarter of an inch bigger. So you need two at one and a quarter by five and a half and two at one and a quarter by um, four and a half. And that's gonna be our mats and layers. But we're going to take our um, white pieces, our multi-purpose card, and what we're going to do is we're going to do a little bit of stamping. So we're going to take our um, stamp platform again and our mat, and we're just going to line up um, our stamps, our Let It Snow, onto our um, onto our platform. So using our stamping mat, we've got the grid on there, which allows us to get that perfect positioning every single time with our stamping. So I'm using the grid lines that are on our stamping mat, and I'm laying my stamp, stamp side down um, onto there just to work out exactly where I want to position these. And I'm just working out if that will give me uh, enough room onto there with it being an inch in width for this particular piece. So I think that looks about right. Once I think I'm happy, I'm just gonna pick that up onto my stamp platform. And I'm just gonna have a little test, have a little look, see, see if that's gonna fit. That looks about right to me. I'm thinking I might move out the let it slightly towards that right hand side, just to give me a little bit more room onto there. Like so, this is the beauty of using a stamp platform. It allows you to fiddle around a little bit and mess around until you get things in exactly the right place um, that you need them so that everything's gonna be lined up. It's gonna give you that nice professional finish. And as well, the beauty is if you are batch making uh, with these, because you'll have lined it up right the first time, you can just go back in uh, and repeat that process a second time around because um, everything will still be lined up. You'll get the same positioning every single time. And so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna line this up. Once we're happy that that's central, just gonna press down the same technique that we used uh, when we were stamping onto our die cut pieces. We're just gonna use our fingertips to press down all over that panel. And again, it's picked up our cardstock onto the stamp, but not to worry at all, just turn it over, pick that up and we get that lovely stamped impression onto our panel like so, nice and easy. And again, we used exactly the same ink pad that we did when we created our topper a little bit earlier. That was our parakeet uh, from the Spectrum Noir Quick Dry Range. And um, like I said earlier, what we've done with this um, particular piece is we've done this twice more. No, we've not, we've done it once more. So we've got two in total. So what we've got is we've got that one that we've just done with its corresponding mat. Then we've got another one of the same size, and then we've got two of the larger ones. So it's exactly the same technique, so don't, don't worry at all. If you've managed to do it that once, just repeat it once more, and then twice more onto your two larger panels. Exactly that same technique of lining it up and just stamping down. The only difference that we've got on the other ones is we've just taken some ink. So in the um, materials list, you'll have noticed that I listed the ink, that polar blue water reactive ink from the Sara Signature Frosty and Bright. If you've got your um, Oasis ink from the um, water reactive range of Spectrum Noir, that works quite nicely. But again, it's just depending uh, what papers you're using. Just get an ink pad that's gonna work nicely with the papers. And just by adding that little bit of ink in around the edge, it just takes that white edge off, makes it look a little bit less stark, and it's gonna make it match with the papers a little bit better. That does remind me, I did forget 
shh, don't tell anyone, no one will know. I did forget to ink uh, my two pieces we popped together earlier. Should have inked these before I did that drop shadow, but not to worry, we can still go back in and add a little bit of ink onto there just to take that white stark edge off and get everything matching nicely. I'm gonna do the same with my smaller sentiment just going in and adding a little bit of ink. Still possible, even though we've might and laid it, just a little bit easier if you actually remember. But if I would have read my own instructions, I would have known, but kind of only got myself to blame on time. When I've written the instructions, when I've put the project together in the first place, and I couldn't even follow them. It's not, not good, is it? But hey ho, all fixed, no one will know. So I'm gonna leave those two to one side, the bits I had to quickly fix now. And we're gonna bring back in these uh, mats and layers for the side of the box. And all we're gonna do, is we are going to uh, mat and lay these pieces onto the blue. And apparently Barbara's little kitten is trying to grab my hands on the screen. So I'm going to say hello to Barbara's little kitten. Oh, it's lovely to have your company, meow. <laughs> I don't speak cat language, I'm afraid. I speak the language of craft. Uh, but yes, hopefully, maybe, maybe the cat is crafting along. <laughs> Barbara, if your cat recreates this project, please do recreate it. Pick, uh, send a picture. I'd be very interested to find out what the cat's craft along um, would look like. And I'd like to know what is your kitten called as well, Barbara? Um, is it so new that you've not named it yet? Is it brand new kitten? Is it a little bit old? I'd love to know. Yeah, I, I do love to hear about all these crafty pets. It's um, very interesting, because I know a lot of you at home do, do have your we call them helpers, they're not much help half the time, but they like to be in our craft rooms, they like to keep us company. Um, so yeah, I like, do like to hear about all your, all your crafty pets. I don't have any pets myself at home. My sister has two tortoises and I do regularly get sent, sent pictures of them. I had a few the other day of them having a bath together, which was quite cute. So we've got a, an older one and a younger one and they do play together quite nicely but they've never been crafty when i used to live with them did used to try and get them in the craft room get them helping out but no they, they were having none of it they're a bit slow um, but i know some people's cats and dogs do like to be in the craft room keeping our crafters company um, they end up covered in glitter and all that sort of thing which i think secretly they love um, but but yeah lovely, lovely to have your kitten uh, have the company today, Barbara. <laughs> but anyway, so I was whittering on about cats and kittens and tortoises. We've matted and layered all of these panels up. So we've got our, our two longer pieces and our two shorter pieces, all stamped ink and matted and layered and at this point we're going to bring back in this inner box do you remember we uh, added our score lines into this a little bit earlier and what we're going to do is we're going to add our panels onto each of the box sides so obviously we've got the two shorter um, sides of the box and we've got the two longer sides which will correspond with our two different sizes uh, two different lengths of our panels that we're adding on. So one's going to go onto that and make sure this is something I was paranoid about getting wrong so just make sure that you've got them the right way up. So when we fold it like that, it's reading the right way so we know it's the right, um, the right way we've stuck that down. And we are getting some more, more kitten updates. Um, Barbara actually fosters kittens, which is absolutely lovely. Uh, this little girl that she's got, our kitten that's joining our craft along today is Maryland. So good afternoon, Maryland. It might be morning where you are. I'm not sure if you're in the UK or US, but hello, Maryland. Lovely to have your company. I can't believe I'm stood here in a room on my own talking to a kitten. I'm not quite sure um, what my life has come to, but I'm having a lovely time and I hope you guys are too. It's nice to, it's nice to have a little crafty chat, isn't it? Something nice and chilled in the middle of the day. I know We've had a bit of an action-packed morning, lots and lots of amazing deals on this morning's wake-up call, and it's only going to continue tonight, that amazing three-hour cartload. I'll be honest, I can't wait to get back after work and sit back and watch. Um, I'm quite often there watch, watching along Crafters TV. If I'm not here, I'll be at home watching, so I'm super excited um, to see what Sarah and Ben have got in store for tonight. Quite excited to get shopping, I'll be honest. I know there's lots of amazing crafty goodies. I'm sure you guys are getting ready for that as well. So it's nice to have this hour in the afternoon, just a little bit more educational, just to be able to share a project with you. Um, hopefully you guys are crafting along. Perhaps you've not picked up these stamps and dies yet, and you're thinking you might check out the website and, and pick these up, add these to your crafty stash. It's lovely to have this, uh, this hour in the afternoon just to be able to craft along with you. So we've added our mats and layers onto there like so and what we're going to do is we're actually going to start to build our box. Now when we are um, putting something together sort of construction wise, I always find red liner tape is your best bet. It's a lovely strong adhesive, I can't believe I've just called red liner tape, lovely. Um, 
but it's a lovely, uh, nice, strong adhesive um, for all your construction. We are getting a question through from Elaine. Hi, good afternoon, Elaine. Lovely to have your company. Um, she's asking, what is the measurements for the larger panel? Now, I'm not quite sure which larger panel you are asking for. If it's for the um, the outer box, the outer box was six and a quarter by 12. If you're wondering about the panels that we've got on the top and on the inside, the largest one is five inches by six inches. And then that pattern paper one is four and three quarters by five and three quarter inches. If I've not answered the right question, please do get back in touch uh, and I'll try and help you. But that larger pattern layer that we've got on the outside and in the inside is five by six and then the smaller pattern paper one is four and three quarters by five and three quarters so hopefully that did help if not get back in touch and we'll do our best to try and help you but like i say i will be posting all the measurements all the step by steps on my facebook page um, after the show so you will get those and um, if you do want to follow along at a later date those will be there already for you uh, as well of course, you could be re recreating this in any sort of style. Uh, it doesn't have to be Christmas. Obviously, we're just creating a box. You could be bringing in your everyday uh, fancy sentiments if you prefer. You could be uh, creating this for any occasion at all. But I think it's quite a nice, a nice uh, style of box to sort of add to your, your crafty, crafty arsenal, if you like. So what we've done is we've added our um, red liner tape onto our tabs. We're just going to fold our box up like so. So one uh, tab at a time, folding onto the inside where it meets that box side and then just burnishing down to make sure it's stuck down uh, well onto there like so. And then the final one, we're just going to stick onto there and then that forms our inner box um, for our, our box creation. And what we're going to do now is we're going to Oh, we're going to bring in our um, outer wrap, but we've had, um, Elaine's got back in touch and she's asking the measurements for the let it. Now we're going to give that a little bit of a measure. So it's about three quarter of an inches, uh, three quarter of an inches, three quarter of an inch even uh, by about one inch. So three quarters by one. So then the uh, larger one is going to be about a, um, a quarter of an inch larger so that's going to be one by one and a quarter and if you're wondering about the panels that we've got uh, for this one so don't forget we've got two of one measurement and then two of the other so for your longer pieces what you're going to want to do for your multi-purpose it's one inches by five and a quarter so one by five and a quarter and then two of one by four and a quarter then for your mats and layers they are going to be uh, one and a quarter by five and a half and then one and a quarter by four and a half so hopefully that does answer your question um, but let me know if then if you need any more measurements or for us to repeat anything we're more than happy to do that so the next stage is going to be to add our inner box into our outer wrap and all we need to do in order to do that is just add some adhesive onto this bottom surface um, that we've got here. So I'm using red liner tape, like I was saying earlier it's great for uh, when you need a nice strong bond for any sort of construction. And obviously with this being um, sort of the main base of a box we want it to be nice um, and strong and well adhered so a few, um, few pieces of red liner tape onto there and I'm using the 12 mil red liner tape that's the thickest width that we've got in our range here at Crafters Companion we do the 3, 6 and the 12 mil um, so great for different uses depending on the size of the project that you're working on um, but for this particular area that 12 mil is going to be absolutely perfect and if you are worrying about lining this up and getting it right first time, I definitely recommend adding a little bit of your tacky glue onto the back um, of that tape once you've peeled the backing off and that will give you uh, that little bit of wiggle around room, that time to manoeuvre that into the position to make sure you've lined that up perfectly. And what we want is we want that quarter of an inch border of that um, teal cardstock all around the outside and that will give us that nice professional finish onto there and just making sure that we've stuck that down well so we're just going to burnish that down so that adhesive has caught onto there and it's going to give us that nice um, sort of strong bond and our box is going to be nice and sturdy. So that is our box all created, obviously we need to decorate it but in order to seal it, well not seal it, if you like fasten it, not seal it, obviously we need to be able to get into it and we're thinking what sort of things are you going to be having in your box, of course it's me so mine's going to be chocolate of course. I'm trying to think um, 
what sort of chocolate would match into I'm thinking minty type chocolate might be quite nice with the colour tones. Um, I'm hearing a brand in my ear now. Some of you may know I'm vegan. I can't actually have the branded. I'm going to call them mint chocolate thins. It's quite funny. I can't have the branded ones as those aren't vegan. But some of the cheap, I say cheap, the knockoff supermarket versions, I can. So mine would be the... You can only have them after a certain time. You probably know which brand I'm referring to. Um, those chocolate after dinner thins, we'll call them, would definitely be going in my box, I think. I think the mint colour tones would work quite nicely uh, with, this, with this project. Oh, what would you be popping in your box? It's one of those nice things when you've got nice packaging like this, you don't have to worry so much about what's actually in, in the box because the box is sort of like the gift itself. It's just why it's always nice to uh, package your, uh, your gifts, whether it be edible or not, in a nice box um, like that. And it's really easy to actually get everything matching colour-wise. Just have a look at your papers. So I always choose my papers first. So I chose my paper and my cardstock first. And then I matched my ink pad um, to that, that, um, that colour tone. So looking through my Spectrum Noir ink pads, using my colour charts, which you can download online, and just matching your ink pad colours um, to those papers gives you that lovely professional finish. But of course we need a little bit more decoration onto this. I'm going to bring in some of our um, Christmas nest decorative nesting dies. Brought these out, I want to say last month, and these are absolutely fantastic uh, for all your mats and layers. For adding that little bit of detail, that little bit of interest um, to any of your projects, whether it be a box, whether it be a card, perhaps you're doing gift tags. I mean, this particular die would be great for all your Christmas gift tags for your presents. Um, but we're using the sparkling snowflake die set, and we're using these two frames um, to create a double layered frame. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take um, our die cutting machine, for our Gemini plays. I'm going to cut the largest one in our teal coloured cardstock. And again, I don't want these dies to move. I don't want to be wasting this piece of cardstock, that's for sure. Not when it's cardstock that this it's this gorgeous. And then we're going to cut the smaller one. Now that is frugal, isn't it? That's definitely pretty close to the wire, let's be honest. Um, but we're going to cut that one in our multi-purpose card. So our smaller frame is going to be from our multi-purpose card and then we're going to mat and layer that onto our larger decorative frame using our teal coloured card. And that's going to give us our sort of our basis, our mat and layer to add our sentiment onto uh, that we stamped a little bit earlier. So it's just adding that little bit more interest. Those extra couple of layers just really sort of draw the eye into that sentiment, just frame it really nicely. Of course, we could have gone with a plain rectangle uh, that we cut on our guillotine, but by using our decorative nesting dies, it gives that, us that extra level of design, that little bit more decoration, just makes it look a little bit more pretty, which is definitely uh, what I'm all for. So we've got those two cut uh, like so. And you can see how beautifully they cut first time, one pass through that die cutting machine. They are lovely decorative um, detailed dies. Um, but of course, they are cutting beautifully first time through our Gemini machine. And that's one of the brilliant things about using our Gemini. Uh, even with detailed dies like these, you get the, that perfect cut every single time. And I know these are from a um, set of Christmas dies, but I'm looking at that and that could be a flower. It doesn't have to be a snowflake. So of course you could be using these all year round. And there's nothing Christmassy at all about that particular nesting die. Um, so great in terms of craftability and versatility with these. You can of course be using them for any occasion and not just your winter and your Christmas theme makes uh, like we're putting together here. And just to get everything matching, uh, again all we're going to do is going to add some more of that ink just around the edges just to draw um, the eye in and take the white edge off of that. We're having some um, lovely comments coming through this afternoon. A lot of people saying that they're actually going to save the show and watch it back at their own leisure. And that's the great thing about all our shows, particularly when we've got craft alongs like this. And with it being an hour, with it being a little bit more um, short and snappy and to the point, if you do just want to sit back and watch um, as we're on this afternoon, you know that you can still catch up. Our shows are always there. You know, they don't get removed after... 60 days or anything they are they're there forever like it or not they are there forever you can watch back at your leisure get yourself a cup of tea a few biscuits of course um, sit down at your leisure maybe print the instructions up um, off once i've popped them on my facebook page uh, so you'll have the instructions there you'll have the video and then just watch back and craft along at your leisure um, but you can do that with all of our shows which i think is absolutely fabulous 
adding that onto there with some foam pads and then we're going to bring back in our uh, box base I'm going to take a few more foam pads I'm going to add this on here and by adding the foam pads it gives us that little bit of dimension that extra extra bit of lift that extra bit of interest to our box and uh, will just give us that nice professional finish um, but of course using some of our, uh, I'm going to say Spectrum Raw foam pads, I don't know where Spectrum Raw came from, I've clearly got colouring on the mind, you can see I've been uh, been using the sparkle pens this morning, I've got a little bit of a pink hand, I've got, I've got a green thumb as well, I was using my ink pads last night, um, so but apparently I need to learn how to wash my hands, Jamie I have washed my hands, I'm just colouring so much, I wash them, I colour again and yeah, they stain a little bit, but they will come out, <laughs> I promise. <laughs> but yes, I have been colouring, but I was gonna, what I was saying, Crafters Companion foam pads, you will find those on the website. And then we're gonna add our snow into the centre of this piece. So I'm gonna get some nice thick foam tape to add onto the centre of here. And this is gonna really lift this proud um, from this topper that we've just added on there. So taking some of our, oh dear, apparently people are singing. <sighs> I'll just, uh, this is being moved to one side and this, this is being brought back in. Foam pads only <laughs> for the rest of this demo, that's <laughs> that for sure. And we're gonna add that onto the center of there. Can you see by the fact we've added that um, drop shadow onto there just means that our snow stands out from that layer underneath. And obviously adding that little bit of ink helps with that um, standing out a little bit more as well. Then we're gonna add in our let it so it's going to spell out our let it snow of course we could just have snow on its own depending on the size of your project how much room you've got if you've not got room to add the let it perhaps you're creating a slightly smaller box or perhaps yours is going to be square of course you could just have the snow and that would still work and read okay but we're going to add the let it above there but you might notice we've got quite an empty bit on that top bit of our box this is where we're going to bring in one of my most favourite things and I must say in this craft along I've packed in a lot of my favourite things we've got sentiments I love a good sentiment I really do love a sentiment whether it's a stamp or a die I do love my sentiments nesting dies obsessed with nesting dies I say it time and time again they're my favourite type of die so another favourite thing in there Christmas obviously I love Christmas but two things I love perhaps more than anything in the world okay that might be a slight exaggeration but I do love them florals and decoupage Roses being my most favourite flower, so I had to bring in our winter roses um, dyes from Gemini. So these, um, we launched these a couple of months ago, I want to say. Fabulous Christmas launch, um, several different designs within the collection, um, but these are all decoupage dyes. So what we get is we get our base layer and we get our layers that we can actually build onto that base layer to create our decoupage. And what you get within the collection is you get the dies, but you also get the topper sheets. I've just hacked into mine. Um, that doesn't sound too brutal. I've just cut it down. Uh, I've die cut a few already, but of course I'm gonna show you how easy it is to line the dies up with this printed artwork. So if we take one of our dies, and we have a look at um, the printed design that we've got on here. You can see for each different layer, they're all numbered. So here we've got one, and there we've got our number two. And it corresponds with the die. So what you'll see, if we turn the die over, we've got the number one onto there, and that will match up with, you guessed it, number one on the printed artwork. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring in our Gemini die cut in place. You can see on this piece, we've gotta get number one, We've also got to line up number two. So I can see that's number two because it's got that two etched into that die uh, onto there like so. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some of our low tack tape and for a die, um, a die like this and decoupage like this, it's absolutely essential to use plenty of low tack tape to make sure they don't move. So the way I find easiest to line these up is I'll actually start by lining up that little notch. Where we've got the notch, that little extension on the die, that matches up with that number that we've got in the circle on our artwork. And all we're going to do is we're just going to manoeuvre this into position. And what we're going to do is you want a slight halo around the edge of that notch. And once you're happy with where that's lined up, what you're going to do is you're going to take some of your low tack tape. I always say not just the one piece, not enough to have just the one piece on one corner because the other side can pivot around. So I always say opposite corners, at least two pieces of low tack tape. And of course, you will find this low tack tape on our website. Absolutely essential for all of your die cutting, for use for your stencils and your stamps as well. Um, but it is essential for when you're lining up your dies just to make sure that they don't move. So that's our top one, but of course we are using our full-size Gemini so we can easily fit 
uh, another one through the die cutting machine uh, at the same time. So we're lining up this base layer. The way that they're numbered is your lower numbers are your um, lower down layers. So number one is your base layer. As you move up the numbers, you move up the layers, if you like, as you build your decoupage. So I'm going to start decoupage by numbers. So it's super, super simple to put these together. Like you've seen, it's really easy to line up your dies um, with your, I was going to say stamped images. It's that same sort of process if you are used to using your stamps and your dies same sort of technique with this you're just lining up your printed artwork with your um, with your dies it's just really easy to do I love these um, these dies I don't know if any of you guys at home got our floral decoupage ones that we launched I want to say about November last year they were absolutely stunning and as soon as I found out we were doing a Christmas one Oh, it was like all my Christmases had come at once, if you'll uh, pardon the little pun there. But honestly, this is a stunning collection. Um, and roses, like I say, is absolutely my favourite flower. But these, of course, could be used all year round. It doesn't just have to be for Christmas or for winter. Uh, we can be using them for other occasions as well, which is what I absolutely love. When we can get even more versatility from all of our crafty stash. It just makes crafting a little bit more enjoyable when we're not sort of looking at projects, products and thinking, oh, that, that can only be used for this occasion or that can only be used for another specific occasion. By being able to use them for lots of different occasions, it just made crafting more enjoyable. So what I've done is I've obviously shown you how to die cut those two. I've die cut the full page of all of the layers. So every single die uh, I've run through the machine uh, using that same technique of lining the die up with that printed artwork, using that notch uh, which is on the die and the number which is printed onto the sheet, um, using that to line them up. And I've just done exactly the same with all of those. Just to save me having to show you the same technique uh, several times over, I've just pre-cut all of these. Um, but it is really quick and easy to do. You probably can cut all of them on the sheet all through the one pass. Um, I think they're about eight by eight inches, I want to say, um, these topper pads. So you can, of course, fit them through your um, Gemini machine in the one go. But just cutting out one of every single layer um, will give you enough to get lots of lovely shape and dimension to your decoupage. And all we do is we just line up the layer um, above with the layer below and of course with it being printed artwork and with it being a die you know that it's going to be exactly the right shape and size it's going to line up perfectly with that layer underneath just makes it really nice and easy uh, to build up dimension what i'm doing now is i'm actually adding shape to every single layer and the way i tend to do this is i'll use my pokey tool of course you could use your foam uh, shaping mat and your ball tools if you find that easier but just rolling it around my pokey tool just to sort of bevel those edges a little bit and it does also help sort of hide whatever adhesive you've got underneath now a lot of people choose to use uh, their Colal 3d glue gel uh, with decoupage i personally prefer to use my foam pads uh, it is a personal choice whatever you find easiest to work with but just something that's 3d so 3d adhesive not something like tacky glue or all purpose or double-sided that's flat you want something that's going to give you that little bit of dimension that little bit of lift uh, so foam pads, foam tape, 3D glue gel, anything that's 3D will be perfect for all your decoupage. But by just adding that little bit of shape into all of your layers, it just gives it gives it that extra bit of dimension, that extra bit of a, of a lifelike quality, if you like, rather than just having them layered up one on top of each other, sort of stacked above each other perfectly. By adding that roundness, it gives it that uh, more natural look and feel and we'll give your project that real professional uh, finish, which is absolutely what it's all about. Just making our projects look really special and giving that dimension onto here. So lining up that layer, and you do get plenty of layers within each die set. Uh, you get several dies and several different layers um, to be able to really build up that decoupage design. It's not sort of like just a couple of layers and it looks quite flat and you've got to cut each one multiple times to get any sort of dimension. Not at all. You get plenty of layers on there. Uh, and within the decoupage pads as well, you get plenty of printed designs. Uh, so lots to be playing with. And you will find all of these dies from the... Um, the Winter Floral Decoupage Collection uh, on the website is a fabulous range. Perhaps one of my favourite Christmas ones this year, but then I say that about every single range, so I won't even bother saying that, but I do absolutely love them. Uh, and I thought the colour tones within this particular um, this particular printed design is perfect for use uh, with the papers that we've got going on 
in this project so everything's going to match together really really quite nicely so what we're going to do is we're going to layer this one it sort of goes behind this one which is nice for something a little bit different just to tuck that into there like so and then what i tend to do with um some of my decoupage is for the base layer with it being leaves i'll tend to shape them upwards just a little bit so again rolling it round our pokey tool just to add that little bit of dimension that little bit of lift onto there like so so just rolling them round is going to give us that extra bit uh, of lift onto there and just gives us that extra bit of life lifelike quality onto our design what we're going to do now is we're going to bring back in our box now what um, what I'd sort of looked at when I placed this down for me it didn't didn't quite work visually what I wanted it to look like so I wanted it to look like it was hugging uh, the actual curve of our um, of our box rather than sort of just being a splay in the corner and the reason why this is shaped in it's in almost like a U shape if you like these um, these particular designs were actually um, designed to work with some shaped word dice that you'll find on the website so you sort of go around the O uh, within each of those words which is why we've got that particular shape to um, to this design but I want it more and sort of an L shape if you like to hug this corner so what we're going to do is we're just going to take a pair of scissors and we're going to trim into this base layer and don't be afraid to do this with any of your die cuts even though we've already added the decoupage layers onto there all we're doing is we're trimming that base layer so we're not having to worry uh, at all about sort of disturbing any of our decoupage if you like um, so we've got pruning the garden Jamie in my ear is saying become a gardener this time on a Thursday afternoon didn't think I'd ever become a gardener but it appears I have or, or a florist if you like so of course we could be using that piece um, as an extra piece um, perhaps you could be tucking that elsewhere or you could be saving that for another project quite like the idea actually of having that behind there changing it up mixing it up I do like this always changing my mind I never like to uh, make the same project more than once um, so always changing it up but by removing that bit there just allows it to hug that corner a little bit more uh, and gives it that better balance onto our project so what we're going to do is going to take some foam to add to the back of this and I think I'm going to add in that little that little extra bit that we cut off I think we're going to add it back in I did say earlier I don't like my waist so any any opportunity where I can make use of uh, something that I've trimmed off then absolutely I will be doing so and it's just going to give us that, that extra little bit of detail onto uh, our floral arrangement so some foam onto the back of course you could be adding it uh, with some of your um, 3D glue gel if you prefer that would give you a little bit of maneuverability a little bit of time um, to um, sort of get that into position but I'm going with my foam pads onto here adding that onto that left hand corner and then finally this little um, this little piece onto that top left hand corner like so just to finish that off and it just fills out that space a little bit more and no one would sort of know that was actually a separate element that we've um, sort of cut out and added back onto there like so so you can see when we look at the actual die itself it's completely i don't say completely different shape slightly different shape we've removed that area there and we've just popped that back onto uh, that top area like so and on the original i did add some pearls into the corners but i think we've got a nice balance into the project here so we've featured our fancy sentiment stamp and dies on that bottom right hand side a little bit of drop shadowing, a little bit of inking, bringing in some of our fabulous um, Christmas nesting dies. We use the sparkling snowflake, those two smaller dies, but of course you could be using uh, any dies you like just for that little added bit of interest. Uh, and we've added that onto that bottom right hand side and because we've got that detail and I'm always talking about balance time and time again, always going back to balance in your projects is what draws the eyes in. It what it's what sort of allows it to sort of look more professional, look more finished off. We've got that detail on that bottom right. We've got quite a bit of dimension onto there. We've got about three layers of foam pads. We're going to need something on that top left to make it balance. And that's why we brought in uh, our winter floral decoupage. And if we tilt that to one side, we can see that we've actually got that shape onto there. So by rounding that um, artwork around our ball tool, it allows us to get that dimension into there and that just balances our project really nicely of course we've got our stamp sentiments all around the edge we've got our bow and of course if we untie our bow we've got that box into the center light so you can be adding anything 
into the middle light. So, so we've got the one that we've created on today's show using our pearl card, but of course the slightly different version um, that we um, did earlier using our glitter card. So something a little bit different, um, but they are same process, same measurements, same stamps and dies that we've used. And like I say, of course, I will be putting uh, that step-by-step -step, um, tutorial materials and measurements all on my Facebook page, which is Lily Fletcher Crafters Companion. So that's our craft along today. I've had an absolute ball. I hope you guys at home have really enjoyed uh, crafting along. If you are going to make this project yourself, I'd love to see what you do create. So do send in your pictures, both onto my page and onto the um, I'm a Crafters Companion and Club Inspire Community uh, Facebook pages. That's, I was going to say that's me done for the day. It's not. It's me done here. I'm going back to my desk to do some proper work. I'll have emails to answer and all sorts. But anyway, that's a different matter. I'm leaving you on Crafters TV. Of course, I'll be watching along this evening because we've got a super, super exciting night coming up on Crafters TV. Ben's going to be coming back. I hope he wakes up from his nap. Hopefully, I hope he's got an alarm set, but he is coming back, been told, promised, he's coming back tonight for a cartload with Sarah. Three hours, it's going to be absolutely amazing. Grab yourself a cup, a little bit to eat, a little bit of crafting before, then perhaps you're going to create craft along. But make sure you're going to be back here at six o'clock UK time for that amazing um, cartload. And thank you so much for your company this afternoon. I hope to see you on Crafters TV again very soon. See you later.